Who welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to Next Hydrogen Solutions channel, the first revolution in the electrolyzer design architecture in decades. Joining us, Reveal, the Chief Executive Officer. As always, welcome back, sir. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be back again. So last time we spoke, we really got an insight into the elevator pitch behind Next Hydrogen. We kind of learned more about your background, your team, but today I want to kind of really unpack what's going on there at Next Hydrogen. So I'm pulling up some slides from your deck. First and foremost here, can you kind of give us an idea of the focus on the green hydrogen uh, applications and where you see most market share that you're going to kind of tackle? Uh, absolutely. So the first market that moved was the one that you see below uh, for materials handling uh, equipment. So it's a big market. It's already there. There's a company called Plug Power. It's about a $15 billion market cap company. The business is primarily focused on providing fuel cells uh, into this materials handling market. Uh, that, that was the first market. Uh, the second market that's coming alive is the heavy mobility market with trucks. Uh, and the reason for that is because green hydrogen we have good visibility by 2025, it's going to approach parity with diesel. And that's a big statement, approaching parity with diesel uh, this decade. So those are the two markets that have moved first. And thinking about next hydrogen, we are partnered up with Canadian Tire, which is uh, leading, which has uh, you know dozens of distribution centers here in Canada. Uh, uh, and number two, in the heavy mobility side, we're partnered up with Hyundai and Kia, which is launching these heavy mobility trucks. So we think we have a great foot in the door in these two big markets. Then the next market that's coming alive now is the large scale green hydrogen market. And when you think about our systems, they were meant for scale, uh, for large scale applications. So, uh, and integration with renewable energy resources. So our systems are very well uh, uh, designed to meet these needs. And over here, you'll see hub and spoke model with, uh, us, uh, us, uh, with, uh, with one facility, uh, say 20 megawatts, 100 megawatts facility. And from there, you have an anchor customer that you're distributing that hydrogen to. And, uh, but also you have these spokes where you can distribute it to the, uh, the excess hydrogen to, uh, uh, to other customers in that geography. So those industries uh, are the industries that are difficult to electrify and that already use a gas and are uh, in significant need of decarbonization. So the industries that really stick out right now are ammonia, cement, steel. So overall, this market is expected to grow to about 150 gigawatts by 2030, about a 100 to 150 uh, billion dollar market opportunity. And that is just the beginning of the inflection point. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of those partnerships in a second here as well. But uh, can you talk about the electrolyzer landscape real briefly here? Maybe just some of the competition. We'll go through some of these slide decks. Uh, absolutely. So uh, two things to note. There are electrolysis companies that produce hydrogen, and then that hydrogen can be used as a gas, or it can be passed through a fuel cell to convert it into electricity for heavy mobility uh, applications uh, and other transportation applications. So those are the fuel cell companies uh, th that can take uh, that hydrogen and uh, use it for motive applications. But as I mentioned, that the addressable market for electrolyzers is greater than what's just available for the fuel cells because hydrogen can be used as a gas or can go through fuel cells as well. So when you think about fuel cell companies, many, many fuel cell companies at this time, in the electrolysis space, the scarcity premium is uh, very much there. There are about five publicly listed electrolysis companies, so very easy to look at our valuation and the valuation of other uh, uh, electrolysis companies. It's Nell, ITM, McPhee, and Green Hydrogen Systems that are publicly listed electrolysis companies. And then there are some electrolysis companies that are part of big conglomerates, so difficult to get direct exposure to the electrolysis space. And those are listed below, Cummins, Siemens, uh, Thyssen Group. Okay. What's different? Uh, I'll just mention one more point over there. Yep. When you think about our technology versus traditional technologies, what we are trying to do is we are trying to give you the benefits of PEM electrolyzers, uh, meaning uh, much superior dynamic response, uh, better ability to capture the renewable energy resource, but give you the cost advantage of alkaline electrolyzers in terms of cost and lifetime. So we're trying to occupy this rare white, uh, rare space uh, using alkaline electrolyzers, but building in features to give you the best of both worlds, PEM and alkaline. Okay, so let's expand that a little bit farther. Can you talk about the actual, uh, the design that you guys have here with this electrolyzer and what kind of makes it unique? Yes, so basically an electrolyzer has uh, a, a, has a solution, KOH, uh, and then you have electricity that passes through the through KOH and, and water, uh, and uh, that produces hydrogen. And as th that hydrogen goes inside the electrolyzer stack, it has to get separated from these fluids in order to be used in a downstream process. 
So what happens is that in typical alkaline electrolysis, and as I mentioned, this design has not changed uh, until now with our technology. This design has remained the same until 1950s. They have a centralized and externalized gas uh, fluid flow separation. So gases, hydrogen and oxygen are separated from the electrolyte outside the stack. And in our case, we are separating fluids and gases inside the stack, not just inside the stack, stack on a cellular level. Those kidney shapes that you see on, uh, on top of the rings, that's where we are having external, uh, internal gas liquid separation. And while we're separating those liquids, it's getting cooled uh, and returned back into the cell. So given this unique design, what you get are three distinct advantages. Number one, you can pass a lot more current through the system. You don't get the choke points that you get with traditional systems. You can better load follow the renewable energy resource because you get, you're separating gases and fluids so close to where the action is, right next to the cell, not in these external gas liquid separators. And because our fluid gas flow a circulation remains exactly the same in each half cell, you've built in this functionality into each cell. You can increase the uh, size of the, uh, of the stack much more easily and offer a much more scalable solution. So by being able to pass a lot more current through the system, uh, you can use less materials and produce more hydrogen. If you're able to have better dynamic response, you can better capture the renewable energy resource. And if you can make the system scalable, then you benefit from economies of scale. So less material use, better ability to capture the renewable energy resource and inherent economies of scale is a very powerful combination to reduce the cost of these electrolyzers. I really appreciate those insights. You sound very technically experienced on this subject. So do you want to talk about the commercial testing that you recently uh, mentioned just to kind of validate the product here with Canadian Tire, Hyundai, and some of these big deals that you've been able to undertake? Yeah, so with Atomic Energy of Canada Limited, it's as blue chip of an organization as we have in the country. Uh, we did a first project with them for the CanDo reactor market. It's a very small market opportunity, but the, you need high current density electrolyzers for that, which is why we partnered up with, the, with them and you can see the code from them. Uh, number two, uh, we, uh, we sold a test and evaluation system, a 0.4 megawatt system to Canadian Tire that ran between 2014 and 2019. On the back of that, uh, uh, they uh, gave us two orders, both about 1.8 megawatt systems. They are going at the distribution centers where they're converting their forklifts from lead acid batteries to fuel cell forklifts. The first one is going to this uh, 1.8 megawatt system is going to that location that you see on the right, Bolton, Ontario distribution center. This will produce about 650 kilograms of hydrogen per day, sufficient to power about 200 forklifts. And to our knowledge, this will be one of the largest demonstration of electrolyzers for materials hand uh, handling applications in North America. Then uh, recently we partnered up with Hyundai and Kia where they are helping us with the supply chain. We are bringing our IP and we are building a proof of concept electrolyzer. Uh, and we'll be looking to deliver that to South Korea in Q222. You can see the quote that uh, we got from Hyundai and Kia calling us a state-of-the-art water electrolysis company. I mean, they have access to all different types of companies. Why they decided to pick us was because of a very unique cell design ar architecture that enables high current density operations, which as I said, results in less material use to produce the same amount of hydrogen and represents a very visible pathway to reducing the cost of these electrolyzers and hence making green hydrogen more affordable. Uh, that's incredibly insightful. I really appreciate that reveal. So finally, can you kind of just talk about, you know, where you were, where you're going here and just kind of the operational focus? Yeah, so last year has been tremendous for us. We raised about $64.5 million. We grew our team now to about 50 people. We added high quality independent board members to the company. We moved into our assembly facility where we can do about $40 million of revenues. Uh, our ERP system has now been installed. And so all the strong, excellent foundation has been laid. Now what we have to deliver this year is three to five demonstrations. We already have the sites lined up, all planned. We want to showcase our technology at multi-megawatt scale uh, at customer sites. Number two, we are also focused on a compelling product development roadmap. We are very, very IP rich, and now we have the capital to bring these new innovations to the marketplace. So see systems that are more energy efficient, bigger systems, uh, lower cost coming out of next hydrogen. We have, we have announced a few ex excellent strategic partnerships recently, Hyundai and Kia, Black and Beach on the uh, uh, engineering procurement construction side. We hope we can show a few more strategic partnerships because it's going to take a village to come together to decarbonize the planet. 
we talked about the deployment of the systems. We talked about our assembly capabilities. We have our ERP system installed as well. And uh, proud to say we had 50 people now uh, and, uh, 50, uh, and excellent people uh, in the company. That's incredible, man. So basically at this point, uh, it's quite apparent that 2022 is going to be a pivotal year for Next Hydrogen Solutions. And at this point, if you guys want to follow this story as we continue to update it moving forward, consider subscribing. And we, of course, want to know what you think in that comment section below. But stay cool, stay awesome. And as always, I look forward to catching you in the next one. Mm -hmm.